Hey everybody! This short crash course will give you an idea of what a LOPA is. We will talk about the seven steps in a LOPA. This allows a multidisciplinary team to evaluate risk with higher clarity and more explicit decision criteria. This method is typically used for higher risk scenarios where decision quality needs to be higher. You will learn about this systematic decision making process, which complements the HAZOP process you learned in the last crash course. Stick with us! Let's start off with what LOPA stands for. The term stands for Layer of Protection Analysis, which is a risk assessment tool developed as part of an international standard to quantify risk to meet a specific probability target. LOPA is used to ensure a design is not underdesigned, exposing people to excessive risk, but also not overdesigned, wasting money and operation resources. It's about allocating appropriate resources proportional to the risk. LOPA is used to evaluate a specific scenario to determine if it's acceptable. Depending on the consequence, the risk tolerance may differ from person to person. Let's think about your personal risk tolerance. Are you generally more risk-seeking or more risk-averse? The challenge in a LOPA is to have a team of people with diverse backgrounds, experiences, and objectives to make rational business decisions. A rational business decision is one that makes sense for the company in the long run. Sometimes a decision might make sense for the life of the project, but will expose a facility to excessive risk further down the road. Good risk-based decisions are about creating value without taking unnecessary risk. Let's think about how to communicate acceptable risk. The level of risk acceptance is expressed in terms of tolerable frequency, which is the maximum number of expected events per year that is considered practicable. Sometimes this can be expressed in terms of probability. Tolerable frequency is the decision criterion for design and operational changes. This is a target for risk tolerance set by a company and often to align with society expectations to drive consistent decisions. The rationale is simple. The higher the consequence, the lower the tolerable frequency. Generally, industry accepts 0.01% chance of a single fatality in a given year. In other words, the chance of fatality is 1 in 10,000 for an individual per year. As you would expect, multiple fatalities are less tolerated, with a tolerable frequency of 0.001% chance per year. The more severe the consequence, the lower the tolerable frequency. Let's try to make these numbers resonate with you, with some relativity. The chances of a person dying in a vehicle accident is 0.01% chance per year. In a population of 1 million, you can expect about 100 traffic fatalities, based on North American statistics. Notice that this is the same as the generalized industrial tolerable frequency. Working at an industrial facility should be as safe as driving there, a voluntary risk most people are willing to accept given the benefits. One of the most dangerous occupations in the world is king crab fishing in Alaska. This line of work has a 0.356% chance of a fatality per year, or 35 times more dangerous than driving. Do you know a facility running at this risk level? Before you start a LOPA, your company needs to define the tolerable frequencies for high consequence events. Do you know the tolerable frequencies for your company? If so, who decided how much risk tolerance your company can take on? Should the target be set by an operator who is focused on quarterly production targets? A project manager who is focused on commissioning deadlines? Tolerable frequency should be set from an enterprise level, where risk is seen at a portfolio level. Okay, now that you get the concept of risk tolerance, let's look at the seven steps of conducting a layer of protection analysis. Step 1. We need to focus on a single consequence. LOPA is applied to higher severity scenarios that are identified in the HAZOP. Consider a test separator vessel overpressuring. In this example, the worst credible case for vessel rupture results in a single worker fatality nearby. Step 2. We need to apply the tolerable frequency of the overpressure of V100 which may result in a fatality. 
Based on the company defined standards, what can a company reasonably tolerate? How can an engineer demonstrate the design is as low as reasonably practicable? Remember how we mentioned that working at a facility should be as safe as driving there? Let's design this process so the consequence of a single worker fatality can occur no more than 0.01% per year. Step 3. We need to determine what initiated the consequence and how likely it can happen. The cause of a deviation in a HAZOP is the initiating event in the LOPA. For our case, the initiating event is the pressure control valve failing in the closed position. There is block flow of the produced gas line when PV100 is closed, causing V100 to overpressure. Let's say the pressure control valve has a 0.1 probability of failing closed in a year. Or in other words, the expected inadvertent closure is once in 10 years. Step 4. Identify the independent protection layers in the system. These are mechanisms which prevent the consequences from occurring. These independent protection layers are the safeguards identified during a HAZOP. To assign a safeguard as an independent protection layer, it must meet specific requirements defined by international and regional standards. It is important to remember, the protection layer must be independent from the initiating event and other safeguards applied to this scenario. What independent protection layers can be used in this scenario? Aha! There is a pressure safety valve on the vessel. PSV100 will protect V100 from overpressuring. Is it independent from the PV failure? Will the failure of the PV impact the performance of the PSV? Let's say this valve can reduce the likelihood of vessel rupture by a factor of 10. This can also be expressed as a risk reduction factor of 10, or a probability of failure on demand of 0.1. Step 5. Calculate the expected frequency of the consequence scenario. Given the probability of the initiating event, the pressure control valve inadvertently closing, and the probability of the PSV failing, what is the probability of vessel rupture? With a simple formula, the expected frequency can be calculated. Considering the vessel is in a high traffic area and a person is around during a vessel rupture, we can expect a 1% chance of a fatality per year. In other words, this is a 1 in a 100 chance event. Step 6. Decide if risk is acceptable based on the tolerable frequency. Now we can make a risk-based decision. Is this process as safe as we want it to be? Comparing what we had calculated and the tolerable frequency. This scenario is 100 times more likely to occur than is acceptable. Since we cannot accept this risk, we need to find a way to reduce the risk. Step 7. Determine the additional safeguards to reduce the risk to meet the tolerable frequency. What would you recommend? We can add an independent high-pressure shutdown on the blanket gas as a safeguard to eliminate the high-pressure source. We added in a safeguard which consists of a sensor, logic solver, and valve, which is the final element. We call this safeguard a safety instrumented function. This is an automated safety action to bring the process to a safe state. The current system is 100 times more likely than acceptable. The safety instrumented function needs to reduce the likelihood by a factor of 100. The reliability target of this function must have a probability of failure on demand less than 1%. Since this safety function must reduce the consequence likelihood by 100 times, we can say it must meet the requirements of safety integrity level 2. We'll talk more about safety integrity level in another course. The combination of the sensor, logic solver, and the final element meets the requirements of safety integrity level 2.
Now, we calculate the new expected frequency of the system. The final result is 0.01% chance per year. Done! The likelihood of the vessel overpressuring is within our tolerable frequency. Now, we can accept the risk. A safety instrumented function is one of the many ways to meet the tolerable frequency. This option requires adding hardware, but it also requires operation to maintain this safety function. Can you think of any other way to lower the likelihood of a fatality?